these clothes don't make me feel comfortable. Hey, I am Chuck the Bureaucrat, and recently somebody reached out and asked me to do a video about how to dress for business. And while I am completely unqualified to speak on that subject, the upside is that my inexperience makes me very confident <laughs> about what I'm going to say. Actually, I'm going to show you a trick that I have used over the years whenever I've had to figure out how to get an appropriate look. My hair, my beard, outfits, what I would do is I would just leaf through lots and lots of pictures to get a sense of what looked right. Typically, I would focus on actors who had the same you know, basic physical build as me because there's lots of pictures of them and they put a lot of time and effort into looking good. So I'm going to turn to two of our presidents, Jimmy Carter, the 39th president of the United States, and George H.W. Bush, the 41st president. Both had military service before a long political career. They were each one-term presidents, and they represent both sides of the aisle. But before we go have fun with them, we have to do what bureaucrats always do, and that is go looking for official guidance. And on the topic of dress code, there just isn't really much out there. What policy does exist dances around actually defining appropriate clothing. And I gotta be honest, if you forage out into the internet, you run into a problem. The websites that are willing to ramble on about how a man should dress, well, they tend to be websites that are selling men's clothing and accessories. Their advice starts to drift towards recommending high-dollar accessories that you may or may not really need. So while I've gleaned information from Esquire and GQ and others, after we've spent some time with the presidents, I'm going to give you my thoughts on how to build a wardrobe affordably at the same time that you're trying to save money for retirement. Okay, broadly speaking, and in no way officially, there is a continuum of men's fashion that runs from casual all the way up to black tie. But these words, they don't actually help very much. What you actually care about is the clothing itself. The words just attempt to categorize the clothing. So I'm going to use the words because I got to, but what I want you to do is I want you to focus on the images of the clothing. Down at Casual, we got t-shirts, jeans, shorts, sneakers, maybe sandals or a leather jacket. For smart casual, you're going to improve the quality a bit. A polo, a button-down work shirt, not necessarily khakis, but if you're wearing jeans, they're darker with no tears. High-quality sneakers, boat shoes, maybe boots. Then you get to the famous business casual. This is button-down shirts, possibly a blazer, but it doesn't have to be one. Same thing goes for the tie. Almost certainly khakis, and then loafers or a dressier boot. Business formal is a suit. The cloth and the jacket and pants match. The shirt is most likely white. A tie is a must. And the shoes are dressy, but not yet high gloss. Now, men's magazines seem to talk a lot about semi-formal for weddings and dressier parties. These are almost always suits with suit-like shoes, but there's rarely a necktie and often more flashy shirts. Just between you and me, I think this is where the magazines make their money, and this is also the, the part of the wardrobe where you have the least need. I know very few people who dress like this in the work environment, and those who do well, they really know what they're doing. Oh, and by the way, I found very few pictures of politicians dressing like this. Then you get the black tie. That's probably the most familiar for military folks. I mean, for men, a tuxedo is virtually a uniform 
all the way down to those high gloss shoes. Oh, and notice that waistcoat? I'm going to mention this a couple of times. All right, with that as background, let's look at how Presidents Carter and Bush dressed across this continuum. And fair warning, you are going to see some images that date back to the 70s. Pay attention to how unchanging these rules are over the decades, except for one, which I'll point out when we get there. All right, let's get started with black tie. Like I said, this one is easy for men. In fact, it's so easy that you can rent a tux if you need one. So I wouldn't put any money into it unless you really are going to be using it. I mean, look, even Prince Charles looks good. Now, I will say that for women, black tie can be difficult, but that's just me being empathetic. I don't have any useful advice when it comes to women's clothing, except maybe this one. Keep an eye on what the first ladies are wearing. There are people behind the scenes helping put these outfits together. And I think it's safe to say that the clothing that the first ladies wear is in sync with the clothing that the presidents are wearing. This is the last black tie image. Notice that while Bush has a bow tie, Clinton has a black necktie. If you look at the other men in the audience, you'll notice that some are in tuxes and others are in suits. There's no sergeant major who's going to be inspecting your uniform, and you just want to make sure that you look good. Okay, I told you that I have reservations about the idea of semi-formal, so I'm going to hop over it, and I'm going to go directly to business formal. Now, I know, this one of Jimmy Carter is an old one. I mean, check out those jacket lapels. Well, what I want you to watch is how the width of the tie matches the width of the lapel. Towards the end, when I make some recommendations about how to flesh out your own wardrobe, this point is going to come back and be very important. Here, George Bush shows two ways to spice up business formal. One is cufflinks, and two, he has a pocket square. And he follows the rule about pocket squares. Pocket squares should match the tie, but not be the same material as the tie. Speaking of neckties, look at the knot that Jimmy Carter has tied here. He's got a nice symmetrical V, not some kind of sloppy half-tied knot. Learn to tie a Windsor knot. AR670-1 lets you get away with a half Windsor or a four in hand, but I am telling you, full Windsor. The last thing about neckties is their length. Here, AR670-1 is spot on. No higher than two and a half inches above the top of the belt and no lower than the bottom of the belt. And really, there's only two things to watch here. How the jackets are buttoned and how the shoulder fits. When it comes to buttoning a jacket when you're standing up, follow the sometimes always never rule. If you have three buttons, it's sometimes always never. A two button suit is always never. One button is always. See? Buttoned, not buttoned, buttoned, not buttoned. Pocket squares, different pattern. Lapel and tie, same width. But George Bush also gets the most important thing right about this jacket, the shoulder fit. If you buy a jacket that is wider than your shoulder width, you get this unattractive divot. Your shoulders look pointy. And here's the problem. To alter the shoulder width of a jacket, the tailor has to basically disassemble the whole thing. It's cheaper just to buy a new jacket. So when you buy, get that shoulder width right. Now, look at Jimmy Carter in this picture. Personally, I think this suit looks a bit big on him. And this is a warning for you guys with really big shoulders. 
as your muscle mass declines, your shoulder width is going to get narrower and your jackets aren't going to fit properly. There's another detail about this image of five presidents to notice. The two Republicans are wearing blue ties, and two of the Democrats are wearing red. You'll hear people say that your tie color should match your political affiliation, but I think it's okay to keep them guessing. All right, so now let's talk about sitting down in a jacket. Here, Jimmy Carter appears to have his jacket buttoned, and that's okay but it is more common to unbutton a jacket when you sit down. It gives you greater freedom of movement, but it can also appear sloppy. I mean, that tie seems to have political aspirations all its own. One nice touch, not common but classy, is a three-piece suit. That vest on the gentleman in the background helps him look more put together, even though his jacket is unbuttoned. Bear in mind that a jacket limits your range of motion, and it can look unprofessional if pushed out of shape. By the way, here we have Dan Quayle breaking the sometimes-always-never rule to show us the proper length of a tie. Same with Mondale. I, I don't know, maybe it's something about vice presidents. But seriously, raising your hand above your head while wearing a suit, it's unflattering. Bill Clinton is showing that one reason for the sometimes always never rule is to hide the fact that your tie is too short. Personally, I think Rosalind Carter has a better wave than Jimmy. Now, before we get off the topic of business formal, I want to show you two ceremonial settings that call for a darker suit. Reagan's inauguration and Barbara Bush's funeral. One thing about the inauguration are those vests. I mean, Reagan's jacket doesn't even seem to be buttoned. These might be some kind of security measure, but it's also a clever way to add a layer against cold weather. Of course, at a funeral, dark suits. And the one thing that I'd point out here is that the women are wearing black, but the men are merely wearing dark. Now, let's take a second and play a little game. Let's take a look at a photo from Jimmy Carter's visit to Three Mile Island and see what the clothing has to say. You got the President of the United States, full suit, tie, buttoned, this guy in the back, ditto. She's a little hard to see, but there is a lady in a nice gray suit. And then you got this guy. And maybe I'm overly critical, but the sweaty comb over, jacket unbuttoned, close talking, or this guy, slouching, no jacket. Something about this picture just doesn't make me feel confident that all those control panels are in ship shape. Or maybe me, I don't know. Anyway, that's enough about business formal. Now let's talk about business casual. Here, we're going to say goodbye to the tie. We may stick with a blazer, but of course, it won't be the same material as the pants. You don't have to have a blazer, and you can try some non-standard accessories. The key point is that you have a button-down shirt with dress pants or khakis. Here is a nice set of variations on business casual. You can also step down from business formal to business casual just by taking your jacket off. Now we're going to make a subtle transition from business casual to smart casual. There's a lot of good details in this picture of George Bush. I mean, notice his socks. They're fun, they're bright, they match the jersey he's wearing. But look at the guy pushing his wheelchair. Nice shoes, dark khakis, athletic polo. Very nice smart casual. Here is a young George Bush with a much more casual look but still sophisticated. In the right setting, a work shirt, and work pants, they look good. And while you can't see much of how George Bush is dressed here, notice the epaulets. Normally, that might seem like an odd choice, but when surrounded by soldiers, a little military-inspired fashion makes sense. Now, let's take a look at casual. Wearing what feels good without worrying too much about appearances. Dressing for the activity that you're engaged in. Even if you're a former president, 
going skydiving for your 90th birthday. So that is the continuum of men's clothing as demonstrated by Presidents Jimmy Carter and George Bush. But how do you fill out a retirement transition wardrobe without breaking the bank? My approach is thrift shopping. Especially in the Northern Virginia area, there are some fantastic secondhand stores that have extremely high quality clothing. Since men's clothing is essentially commodities, there are just racks and racks of khakis and polos and neckties and belts. The second secret is that a lot of men have a complete wardrobe, but they don't wear all of it. So it is not at all uncommon to find things with the tags still on them. So I would recommend some button downs, some khakis, and some loafers, just on the cheap. Put together some business casual, wear it around, and if you don't like it, just donate it back and get some more. But when you buy ties, make sure that the width matches the width of the lapels of the jackets you're going to be wearing them with. Maybe you can find a blazer, but I will tell you, don't expect to find suits that fit you and are in good condition. Once you have some business casual put together, maybe a little smart casual, you're to the point where you're starting to understand what you like. And now it's time to go to a men's clothing store and buy one suit. Do not go rushing out and buy five suits. I mean, when you get that GS-15 job, that's when you should go out and pick up your second and third suit. But if you're still in the interview process, do not overload your wardrobe with expensive items that you might not end up wearing. Trust me, when you need a suit, you can go buy a suit. So there's, there's no reason to rush the purchase. Speaking of jobs, one of the common experiences for military retirees is to get a contract job for a short period of time immediately after they leave service. If you want to see some features of that experience, watch this playlist. <laughs> 